Hi there, it's your girl Michelle the Miniature Misfit and in this episode of the Cthulhu series I will show you how you can make your very own monolith stones for your Cthulhu cultists to walk up through to worship at the summoning stone that we created last week. Taking your thin corrugated cardboard, measure out an inch and a half width and and two and a half height. This will be your template. Take your scissors and just cut it out. So we have our template. You will need at least four of these rectangles per stone. So go ahead and decide on how many stones you would like as your Cthulhu scatter terrain and go ahead, turn up the tunes and cut out a buttload. I've decided to make four of these stones as my walkway to the summoning stone of Cthulhu. I will cut out 16 of these cardboard rectangles. Half of them will have the corrugation running vertically. The other half will have the corrugation running horizontally. This is so when we glue them together, they will be a lot stronger. So now we have our nice pile of cardboard. Now let's glue them together. As you can see, the corrugations are running opposite directions per layer. This will create a very, very strong structure. These stones need a nice strong base to sit on, so we'll use them as a template. Take your thin cardboard, take your stone, and as we did before, just draw around them. We'll need four this time. Let's take the corners off to make them look a little bit more organic. You don't have to be perfect. In fact, the less perfect you are, the more natural the bases will look. So now we have our organically cut out bases. We'll put them aside for the moment and we'll come back to those shortly. First, we need to take each of our stones, take our hobby knife, craft knife. One of these long ones is better than the short bladed ones. But if you've only got a short bladed one, that's okay. Just take your time. And as we did with the summoning stone, we're just gonna nick into the side and carve the edges away. Here are our stones. Now it will be time to glue them to the base. Take your hot glue, apply it to the bottom, the more the merrier, and stick them straight down in the middle as best you can. Don't worry if the glue comes out or they're a bit of a wonk, just twist them. The excess glue will help to make the stones look a part of the ground. Once they can stand up on their own, let go, carry on. Going back to the first one, take the hot glue gun and if you have a nozzle like mine, then you can do this. Take the nozzle and just run it through the glue that has squeezed out and then add some texture to it by scraping it backwards and forwards up the stone and across the base. Thank you. 
Let them cool and dry and we will start the next step. So if you want more of a 3D look to your stone, so it comes up maybe like this, all you need to do is just glue some more layers of cardboard. With some exciting undiluted PVA glue, we will cover the bases. Get some stones from the sand. Open the stones with the camera. The stones I'm looking for are these sort of semi-smoothy pebbly ones because I want them to look like they're at the seaside. And rocks at the seaside are smooth. Next up, the fine stuff. As you can see, the small scree really does bring the whole piece to life. Now we've got our large stones and our medium stones on there. This one's probably the best to see that. As these stones are for my Call of Cthulhu, the basing needs to be the same as the previous one. Taking our PVA glue, we'll apply a thin coat all over the base of the model. Using a damp brush, we will work the glue in. Next we'll take some sand and we will lightly sprinkle it over the areas where we want it. Rinse and repeat with all of the stones. Now it's time to wet the bases down with our 50-50 water and PVA glue mixture. So now we'll just drip it on. While that's drying, if you take your wet brush and with the glue still on it and dip it in the sand, you can add texture to the surface of the stones. If you get sand in the corrugation, it will hide the corrugation and give you a really good texture. If you don't manage to fill all of the corrugation in with sand, don't worry, we'll cover that in the next step. Using the sand in this way not only adds texture, but also makes the piece super strong. Now it's time to just leave them to dry. Now all of the basing materials are dry, we're going to take some black gesso and base coat everything. So next we will be painting and as we did for the Cthulhu summoning stone, I'm going to be using just normal craft paint, nothing exciting, nothing expensive and a lid from an old biscuit tin. Once your stones have been painted with the base coat, leave them to dry thoroughly before continuing on to the next step. So for our next tone, we're going to choose a grey. Now we're going to do what's called an overbrush. Minimal amount of paint on your brush. And with the tips of the brush, I'm going to just gently brush over in different directions. So I'll continue to do this for the rest of them. But as you can see, it gives a rather nice stone-like effect. Now that's all done, we're going to dry brush our stones with our handy dandy cheapo makeup brush. Let's just get some absorbent material, otherwise known as loo roll. 
Don't worry if you think this is too light. We're going to use a black wash. And if it's still too light, we'll add some more black wash. It's fine. I've mentioned before how makeup brushes are amazing for dry brushing. And the main reason is their bristles are so soft. They don't hold onto a lot of paint. They're designed to hold onto powder, actually. They only release very small amounts of paint, which makes life amazing. Half of the battle with art is if you can explain it away, you win. I'm not even joking. So, so I passed my art exam. Okay, step two on the dry brushing front, we will use plain white and we will be very, very delicate with this. By the way, don't wash your dry brush. We're going to take pure white and we are gonna get as much off as possible. We are dry brushing certain areas. So have a look at your model, try and think zenithal highlight and put your main white on the zenithals. Okay, now all the dry brushing is done, this thing needs a wash. <laughs> now everything's dry, we can move on to painting the algae. Let's start with a nice blue-green. This one is from Crafter's Choice and it is called Deep Green. I had a few comments in the last video about algae. <laughs> And so I want to show you in detail how I paint it. I always make sure I'm going from bottom to top and it's literally a flick and I will let this do what it needs to do. So what we're doing is we're using the brush strokes to emulate what we're looking for. That's one done. We'll come back after I finish doing the rest. As you can see, I finished painting them with the dark green and it's starting to look pretty damn good if I do say so myself. Time for the mid green. You're aiming for about 40% coverage with this lighter green. You're just mid tone highlighting type of thing. I don't know how to explain it. If you know, please let me know in the comments below. Oh no, dear. Please let me know. <laughs> Never use a good brush for this because you are going to rub the side of your brush to get all those lovely little tiny, tiny highlights. Always use a really cheap, nasty one. If you can nick one, let them dry. All is well with the world. And we'll come on to our next colour. Okay, so our next colour will be a nice bright yellow. Very nice, very nice. As before, we're going to use a very thin paint. Bit of dry brush action. Just a small touch, but it does make a massive difference. So I'll continue and finish the rest of these up and we'll come back shortly. Now that's dry, we're gonna take our black wash. Easy. The black wash is very easy to make. There are a ton of tutorials online. My recipe, a squirt of black paint, water, and a couple of drops of washing up liquid or detergent if you're American. The washing up liquid acts as a flow aid, which allows the paint to run into all the little cracks and gullies and nooks and crannies, creating a very nice wash. Now, we'll let those dry. <laughs> They're never ending drying. And I may go over with another black wash. So now they're all nice and dry, we're going to take our lovely crappy makeup brush and some more white paint and just do a little bit more dry brushing just to bring out the highlights. As you can see, the dry brush brings out all that texture that we put in with the filler. And now it really looks like stone.
Thank you ever so much for watching and if you enjoyed my video please leave a thumbs up let me know in the comments below if you're going to attempt this or if you have attempted this and don't forget to subscribe and see you next time take care oh and keep watching till the end for the outtakes <laughs>